This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Exactly. Welcome, everybody. And with me, like always, is Leon. Hello, Leon. Welcome. Hello there. How are you doing? Hey, it's pretty good. It's a bit rainy out here, start of autumn, but ah. we're doing fine. Yeah, we're coming to you, like always, from the Leuchtfeuer offices, oh, our Mordic agency, to talk about Mordic, of course. Who could have thought? <laughs> uh, uh, as you probably guessed from the title of the show, um, today our main interview is with Clement Kubetic on replacing cron jobs with timers with system d timers to be exact so a little bit of nerd stuff but for everybody who cares it's a uh, good stuff so yeah stay tuned for the interview before we go there like always we have a little bit of news from the modic world yeah talking about modic the modic 4.4.2 has been released bringing a bit of um, minor patches and bug fixes um, i think the custom objects import importing is now working again yeah There's that's been, probably the most prominent yeah been a little bit here. Of, issues um, and for your information there won't be a modic 4.5 and no more modic for future releases just some minor bug fixes um, minor patches but nothing major to focus going on modic 5 yeah the team is really going all in with modic 5 there may well be modic 4.4.3 or 6, or 12, or whatever. <laughs> But eventually, we will move on to Modic 5 and see all the cool new features yeah. happening there. Excited. And that's a good re release cycle, because it also means that 4.4 is supposed to be the stable release, mm -hmm. release now. Um, features always have a little bit of a tendency of, to introduce new bugs. <laughs> and, um, most people points. don't want those <laughs> yeah. bugs. Okay, so, so it's a good, cool concept. And Modic 5, uh, pushing hard to get that out of the door is another good idea. And at the core of that, uh, the team decided to move some of the boring part, the, the best part of the boring work <laughs> yeah. uh, outside of the team. Ah, there is no boring work when working, working on Mordic. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm talking about stupid transition or, yeah. or, or um, um, moving all old templates to new styles, etc. a yeah. hundred times. It, it, I guess it is boring. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so we'll find people uh, elsewhere like freelancers um, and pay them some money to do that and the, the team can concentrate on the uh, things that, that require more thoughts and yeah. more discussion more knowledge um, to fund that we need some actual money so um, it's a crowdfunding is going on mm -hmm. um, I guess it's couple of thousand bucks left a uh, good good amount of money is already there no oh, nice yeah uh, like like on others we also chipped in some some number um and if you are willing and able to also uh chip in i don't know a thousand bucks or a hundred or ten thousand <laughs> <laughs> no no a thousand is a good number but if it's 200 that's very very well very welcome as well um please get in touch with ruth directly ruth chisley our project lead mm -hmm. um there's no crowdfunding page this time because of some issues in the setup, setup of that. Therefore, it's an informal process, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there will be a, a nice big thank you publicly oh, uh, <laughs> for, uh, coming to you in the end. So yeah, uh, full speed ahead with Mautic 5. I can't wait to tell the truth. Then, um, when we look at what else is going on at, at the Mautic world, there's, there's one, word, that one name that comes <laughs> up time and again. That's a good friend. Joey Keller in Hungary um, and he is issuing tutorials once in a while, mm -hmm. video tutorials also, sometimes even code or code snippets. Now he did a completely different thing. He went one level higher and, and published a plugin. It's called the, the Guided Tutorials plugin. At least it's in beta. Um, and that's basically taking a user by the hand to learn or to, to go the first steps in Mordic. So the way it works is you install this or you set up an account with this Mordic, uh, with, Mordic with, with Joey's <laughs> server, mm -hmm. um, install 
the thing in your Mautic. So this creates a new menu item for you. And um, in this menu item, you now have the steps to learn Mautic, like, like create your first contact, create your first form, uh, create a lead generation campaign. I don't know exactly what, what else is going on there, but there's certain types of things and certain things within those types. And the plugin knows what you already achieved and says, hey, welcome, what about doing this next? Yeah. Um, so really taking you by the hand and to, to go all the way to being a Mordic at well expert level one maybe <laughs> yeah but um, I mean, it's pretty cool that we now have a plugin that takes you by the hand mm -hmm. and directly guides you in modic because watching tutorials is one hand but yeah. like having that directly in modic it's much more interactive yeah obviously yeah. and it's cool uh, the only drawback here is that obviously uh, joey server does have to learn about your mm -hmm. achievements in, in modic so you give them API access, access yeah. to your system. Um, so, so, in other words, this is not for real systems, just for your learning environment, not for production yeah. uh, purposes, I guess. Um, so, that's really cool, but um, while doing this, Joey discovered that there's many more things that might make <laughs> sense. <laughs> so, first thing he did is now rename it from Guided Tutorials to the Navigator plugin. Oh, yep. uh, so, very generic name, and it might include really things beyond just tutorials. It, for instance, could have campaign templates to import into your instance. Oh. So, it's not like here's how to do a double opt-in campaign. It's more like click Here this button, a double opt -in campaign, click yeah. this button to have a double opt-in campaign, uh, or other things. There's a feature idea called the version buddy to explain to you which version is is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I have no idea how many hours per day Joey has. It must be more, well, than, more 30. than us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's doing crazy stuff like always. Yeah, but uh, as you mentioned, campaign templates like something scratched the back of my head. I kind of remember that Roof once talked about like a strategic initiative. I think not a Tiger team, but a strategic in initiative uh, directly about this topic about campaign templating and being able to campaign. Air copy campaigns left to right. Yeah, yeah. Th there is this initiative. I think she uh, presented it even in in the Mordi Conference Europe last year. And there is oh, a, yeah, a Slack right. channel by that name. Um, but so far, that is well, honestly vapor where, where there's nothing going on there. Mm -hmm. It's just the ideas to say, yeah, wouldn't it be cool to have a library and download your campaigns, uh, install it directly in your Mordic. And there are other as aspects as well in my mind, like um, exporting your own campaigns and moving it to a different system, yeah. for instance, from one would client to another or from staging to live. Would be great. Um, yeah. Even create your own library, or like a private library or, or for your own clients and all that. So it's nothing, no, not a new idea, really. It's it's something that Mordic should have natively. Mm -hmm. There are, I mean, it, it's cool that Joey is doing this thing now. It's not, not just an idea. He's, he's really <laughs> having it almost ready. Um, while he was discussing that in the forums, others like, like Sebastian Farncrock uh, chimed in and said, yeah, well, interesting, we're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, we did something similar like, like two years ago as a proof of concept as well because we needed it for a client project and said, oh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool to have this as a full-blown feature? So yeah. I bet there's 10 more agencies out there who have something in their drawers and uh, it's okay to, for them to make their own come up, think things through, come up with ideas, come up with solutions, have their learnings and experiences. But then we all should... Uh, put that together in a joint effort and, and uh, come up with the official campaign library feature for Mordic. Yeah, it would be very beneficial for like all users and agencies to have that feature. Yeah, it's just a killer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. bottom line, uh, thumbs up, Joey. Uh, <laughs> can't wait to see yours. Yeah. And um, talking about Joey, you cannot come across the forum without him. But this time, um, I found a thread which is not by him, but I think it was started by Toby. And it was about um, 
yeah, the Twilio plugin, and it was uh, talking about how you can send WhatsApp messages using Twilio. And I think Andy Towney from from above the pond uh, chimed in and stated. <laughs> Was. Uh, no, it's funny above the pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, across the pond, <laughs> on the other side of yeah, the pond. Yeah. Um, yeah, he chimed in and said, "Hey, it's a feature that already exists." I asked Twilio themselves, mm. and um, yeah, you have to use like a normal syntax. Just put your WhatsApp and then the number behind it, and uh, started a thread about it. Yeah, yeah. The thing that that Toby said uh, was, uh, ah, "Can't we have a WhatsApp plugin?" Um, natively, no, no, mm -hmm. so no, no web hooks involved or something. So similar to what um, Joey also tried in his uh, sleeping room or whatever. <laughs> um, and so what Andy figured out was, okay, this is probably a really simple change to the existing Twilio plugin mm -hmm. to support the Twilio, the, the, the WhatsApp syntax by Twilio. Uh, so all it takes is somebody to implement this tiny little mm -hmm. change. Uh, if you're interested, yeah. it's there for you to become really famous. Maybe not rich. <laughs> really, really famous. Not rich, not rich but, but <laughs> famous, really famous. Yeah, talking yeah. about messaging, there's also been some news about like a new SMS bundle I've read. I think from, from our friends at Search Media, do you have a bit more insight about that? Yeah, isn't it funny that that we're not talking at all about email this time, but about <laughs> messaging? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Our friends uh, Michael and Jordan they took a fresh approach. Uh, fresh approach. They said uh, this Twilio thing does not what we want. Mm -hmm. um, they created a new one, also based on a different service. I mean, in the end, you need a service where you can send your SMS, and then you need a plugin to to talk to that service. And they they changed both. So they said we use yeah. MessageWiz yeah. instead of Twilio, and we have a way cooler plugin which can do much more things. So similar to an email, we now can send uh, segment SMS to oh, so like a new, nice. news, <laughs> newsletter, new news message, news, news, <laughs> SMS what? message. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, like like a newsletter to uh, ten thousand people, you can mm. now send the same thing to ten thousand SMS recipients. Oh, nice! Um, uh, of course, you can still do that via campaigns as well, and you can uh, like like in a segment email, you can or like in any email, you can t send a test SMS from within the setup of that. No, oh, nice. Uh, so. A um, lot of cool features. Yeah, probably something to learn from, if nothing else, uh, for the Twilio plugin. But uh, give it a shot. Also, message with having more providers is always good. Competition is always good. I like <laughs> it. Good and healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's also been something solved, which has been around for some time. And it's from our friends Christian Taxi and Leonardo Baller. Bolot, Bolot. How do you know how to pronounce his name? It's uh, Brazilian. It's Portuguese. Uh, so I, have no I, idea. I don't even try. <laughs> yeah. um, it was about uh, yeah showing a focus item when yeah pressing a button on a landing page, and prior to Modic 4.2, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it just wasn't working because all scripts were blocked on landing pages. Mm -hmm. But with 4.2, the feature of implementing scripts and the header or body of your landing page has been implemented. And they found a solution and described it pretty well how that works. So if you listen out there are interested in yeah showing a focus item on your modic landing page when pressing a button, there's a forum thread about it and I'm explaining how they did it and how their solution works. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty cool that they had this issue trying that for for longer times and with modic 4.2 they finally are able to find yeah. a solution yeah like like always we frequently refer to the forums these days uh, this is also a forum thread with, yeah. with a nice documentation of how to to solve it and uh yeah i think it's a good development that the forum is so rich now of, of good stuff and solutions um, another thing in the forums was the question about catching an arrow. Basically, it was a rather narrow question, like, hey, how can I notice if a segment fails to rebuild or something? Mm -hmm. um, and it turned into a general discussion about catching any sort of arrows for, from cron jobs or other. Oh, yeah. Um, Important. Yeah, for, for, for any professional maintainer of, of a Mordic instance, yeah. uh, you don't only want the cron jobs, you also want to notice if anything mm -hmm. went wrong. True. And yeah. it turns out it's not that 
easy these days because there's some some mm, misbehavior of, of certain commands in Mautic, mm -hmm. which do not throw errors when they should or, or not, not not the error error re return code oh, okay. um, um, and in, in my mind uh, combining multiple things in this thread plus a little bit of bug fixing with, with, which we're currently doing and we'll, we'll do PRs for in, in the GitHub will end up in a best practice for catching errors in Mordic cron jobs. Yeah. So I'm I'm very optimistic that we'll, we'll have that very soon and we'll I promise we will publish it. Of course. <laughs> mm. And um, one more thing, the last thing for today from the forums. Um, there was an example by TechBill who tried to add a spouse name to the salutation. So if there is a spouse name, uh, he wants to have the salutation talk to both. Mm -hmm. And um, there is no usual way or no no uh, out of the box way but he used uh, some nice twig templates and gave a pretty good example on how to solve exactly that problem using twig templates and i think custom objects for that and he also explained his solution and documented it in the forum thread so just another showing that the forum is getting richer and richer and yeah. not just oh, i found a solution yeah. but nothing on it <laughs> yeah this refers to the twig template plugin by Kusmani, mm -hmm. uh, which is paid plugin. Uh, it's just a handful of bucks, but it is paid. So, um, But it's so crazy powerful. This is oh, yeah. ju just uh, just a glance at, at the power of, 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 of what it brings. Um, but for those who never really started looking at it and, and are afraid of the word twig, etc., <laughs> it's really simple. Take a look and you'll get the point immediately. Surely. But, Leon, I have a question for you. Oh, um, no. This out of the box thing about salutation, for instance, mm -hmm. um, I have I tr tend to remember there's something going on with with dynamic content the content these days. Originally, it was not even there in the grapes chairs, but now it is there. B but it does not really work. Or what what was the point there? Do you remember about dynamic content? I think. Yeah. Um, it wasn't working and now there was a PR with a, with was merged in 4.4 point something oh, okay but I'm not exactly 100% sure if they're actually if it's actually working as expected yeah. now but talking about um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, I, I okay. want to explain what what I uh, envision because you said there's no out of the box solution wouldn't it be easy enough to say uh, the salutation is a dynamic content piece mm -hmm. it says if there is a spouse uh as as a custom field yeah. then use this and if not then use that wouldn't that solve the problem too if dynamic content works in email that surely would would solve the problem okay good now back to you what would yeah talking <laughs> about um, just uh read today there's a pr bringing back the um oh, how is it called the center the preference center the preference oh. center blocks for oh. the for the builder. Oh, yeah, I think <laughs> like cool. today or yesterday I saw the PR for that. I mean, uh. it's still in the works, but I thought about um, okay, blocks that have been missing from the old builder to the new one, and yeah. there's still work on that. We're <laughs> getting there. Awesome. Slow. Okay, and now we're getting to something else, and that is the interview uh, with with Clement. And uh, here it is. Enjoy. Okay, let's go. Uh, welcome, Clement Kovetic. Welcome to the show. Um, we talked a little bit after the Mordic conference and your talk about Conjob. I thought it's a great idea to uh, revisit the topic here on the Mordic cast. So again, thanks for being here. How are you doing today? Hello, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice day here in Slovenia, so... We're having Is a good it, time. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it's it's really hot over here in Germany. Uh, but okay, I won't complain. Yeah. <laughs> a a um, lot of sunny days, probably the, one of the last ones, but let's enjoy them. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, let's let's go with this interview and then go out to the sun. How is that? <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, for those who did not see you at Mordic Conference, um, Give us a little bit about yourself. You you do live in Slovenia, as far as I remember. Uh, 
where exactly, what's your education, what's your professional role these days, etc. So yeah, so my name is uh, Klemen Kobitic. I live in Slovenia. This is a country right next to the Adriatic Sea. We have a small coastline. Uh, we are neighbors of Austria, Hungary, and Italy, uh, and Croatia, of course, yeah. one of the uh, one of the countries with the biggest coastline here. Um, I'm 33 years old. I'm a computer engineer by profession. In my in my previous years, I have worked as a system engineer, as a DevOps engineer. I have I have mainly, and I currently am working with Linux. Uh, one of my biggest passions are uh, clouds and containers. And cool. and of course, lately, for the couple of years, like two or three years, uh, we have started with implementing Mountic starting with uh, using it ourselves in our company company and mm -hmm. then offering it out to our clients and of course we found some clients and uh, things are progressing relatively good currently <laughs> that's cool so um i take it that you're a, a colleague of matthias sagmeister who was already on the show last year so you're in the same company right Yeah, we work for the same company, although he's more of a developer of plugins and code that runs Mautic, and I'm more uh, on yeah. the background side, so making sure he has the proper environment to do his work. But yeah, we work at the same company, and we're co-workers. So. Okay, perfect. And uh, obviously, the fact that you're working on the background on the integration side etc uh makes you the the proper person to talk about cron jobs and, and things related and that's what you did at multi conference global 2022 um where the talk i put it in the show notes and i think the title was something like uh cron jobs for 2022 or or, or roughly yes, like that uh, um, exactly so you, so it, it is all about cron jobs i would recommend people go there after listening to this interview it's not uh, necessary to understand the interview uh, but you should by all means go back and, and see the talk as well um, so it's about cron jobs is, or, or replacing cron jobs or whatever uh, cron jobs is is more a nerdy a technical uh, <laughs> part of, of uh, implementing more tech so it's not for everybody everybody needs it but but not, not everybody should should mess around it so forgive us everybody who is not familiar with con the concept of console commands and, and um, cron jobs etc Try listening to the first part of the interview. It, it might be fascinating enough. When it gets too nerdy, just uh, fast forward <laughs> and forgive Open us. Open a beer. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay, or do that right now. <laughs> um, yeah, for everybody else, um, Cronjobs, uh, Cronjobs always has been a, t a topic that you come back to where questions uh, pop up in the beginning questions of optimizations pop up over time and uh, things left and right how did, how did this all start for you I mean uh, most people start with with vanilla cron jobs from the documentation and what, what were your initial experience what were your pain points over time And uh, can you give us like, maybe some, some examples for issues that you found over time? Yeah, of course. So in our company, it started basically with the need for sending some emails, some notifications. Uh, we found Mautic. Um, and at some point, our manager said that we need to install this piece of software somewhere. At that point, we started with version Two, mm -hmm. which was I think at that time a, a little bit in the on the downtime, um, and of course I took the I went on the web web page as with all other software I downloaded it, and honestly as 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 many others I didn't read the full documentation, and of course things didn't work, um, I didn't install the cron jobs. And of course, at some point, we discovered that 
some background tasks are run by cron jobs. Um, I don't know how much experience do our listeners have with Linux, but it's a natural development that a lot of uh, Linux features currently, one of them, of course, are cron jobs, are being replaced by more modern tools. Um, some of them, some of them, maybe are more are more useful for running in the cloud or maybe in the containers. Uh, but some of them are just being replaced because they lack some features that in modern times we, we do wish to have. Uh, so for starters, you need to run cron jobs with a proper user, at least if you want to have a proper, uh, if, if you want to make sure that security is tight on your end. Uh, some some documentation uh, that you can find on internet regarding the implementation, uh, the, regarding the implementation of cron jobs is incorrect or it's not as secure as it should be, uh, like r running with, uh, s with user permissions too wide, stuff like that. And of course, uh, I wanted to do that properly. I set up proper users. Uh, I set up the cron jobs. And honestly, the documentation said, use this periodically. So run this every couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, at, of course, for testing and for for the needs that we had at the beginning, which were adequate for not so strict uh, rules, like we need to send this in the first minute or we need to send this every minute or at least this needs to be sent in the next three minutes or a, a predicted timeline, this was okay. Yeah. But when we at least started offering this to our customers, to our clients, with uh, when we got some bigger clients, we couldn't just say, yeah, you know, it's a sort of a rule of thumb. Um, it will be sent in the next couple of minutes or something like that. Um, of course, with increasingly number of contacts, this needs to be this needed to be predicted more and more. Uh, it it needed to be managed, and of course, like with all with many solutions in Linux, you turn to Bash, um, and you start scripting. Like yeah. we wish to run this cron job as possible as uh, as we can. Uh, we will add some more CPU if needed. We don't care about that. We just wish to send uh, these emails or some do some other stuff, some other uh, some other text as often as possible. Uh, maybe in the future this this solution will be solved differently. At least in the Symfony framework, there are options to solve this without using cron jobs. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, this task these tasks need to need to be run somehow. Um, and of course, our our scripts just wasn't so they, they required a lot of maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say one of the requirements that we wanted to have, or some of the problems we had, that when we deployed something new, um, we needed to make sure that the cron jobs are not running, right? Because oh, yeah. when we were deploying new stuff, we wanted to stop cron jobs, um, deploy the new version, and then rerun them again and of course you can mm -hmm. you can do many things in linux it just it's just a matter of how much time you will spend doing that of course if you use bash uh, everything can be done it just requires more involvement more time so at that point uh, i remember that even linux as is so linux distributions like major linux distributions like ubuntu or red hat which are one of the biggest one and more common most commonly used I remember they they also started replacing some of the cron jobs with system D timers. Okay, I think that's a perfect example. Um, even when you do just a simple upgrade of, of Mod or update of Modic, uh, you don't want the cron jobs to run, and it's always tricky to to stop them and to make sure to restart them afterwards, etc. So. Um, on our end, we, we do the same thing. We have some, some bash scripts, as you mentioned, to do that. But uh, the simplicity is, of course, a, uh, it's, it, could, it could be better. It's not, not simple. And it's not yeah. also not, not out of the box. So yeah, that's, that's good. That's, it's a typical approach of making Mordic better. Um, the other thing that you mentioned was about the email 
the alternative ways of, of sending emails, uh, mails, I, I'm, I'm confident that we will have that in, in Mordic 5, by the way. So uh, Symphony Messenger is probably what you're referring to. Oh. Um, but that only affects email, right? And so all the other jobs are still uh, in the same, same shape. It's not going to go away. Uh, okay, so there's there's multiple things. Just to, to sum that up, uh, some is the reliability, the overlap, um, the programmatic uh, control of, of uh, things, etc. Um, I think in the talk you had some other aspects, but, but in, in general, uh, there are multiple issues where you, where you found that, that cron is not perfect. It, it either needs to be enhanced through through tricky, flaky bash scripts, or find something else, and that's what you did, right? Yeah, so in general, of course, you want to have a solution that's bulletproof, if sometimes maybe even 99% is not enough. Um, and I remembered that many, many Linux distributions solve this by going th from cron jobs to using systemd timers. So I went into the documentation of systemd timers, how, th how things work there, if this could benefit us, if, co if it could improve our reliability issues, if it, it could improve our performance, if it, if it could uh, ease our programmatic approach. And basically I found out that it can do all of that with less effort, Uh, with better performance, uh, with better reliability. And we started testing and re honestly, really quick, we started using the solution and disabled our cron jobs and went just to system the timers. Um, so the concept is, is sort of the same. You have a task that needs to be run. It's just that it's not being run by the cron process. It's being run by the system D. Um, and system D is more, it's uh, one level higher. So the abstraction is a little bit bigger. Um, you have many cool features that you don't have uh, in cron jobs. One of the biggest one is that it knows when the previous task exited and the new one can start. So mm -hmm. let's say we increased, so we changed our approach. We went from running task, the, running the tasks every X couple of minutes to just running them continuously. So we now we now can say, when you stop, just start again. And this so works perfectly for us currently. Plus a, a, a waiting time of, of your choice, like like uh, when, when email has been sent, start over again right away. When the, segment, when the segments have been rebuilt, wait 30 minutes before you start over. Uh, When you start, when when you download the the latest uh, geolocation database, wait one week and start over again. Is it like that? Yeah, all of this can be configured. So mm. the documentation and the possibilities uh, when running uh, systemd timers or basically when running anything uh, with systemd also processes is sort of endless. Um, so yeah, of course, all of this can be set up, and we have that set up. So maybe mm. for for production system systems, uh, these these periods are shorter, uh, and for let's say for test systems where we can wait a little bit more, uh, these periods are a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the cron daemon is present in every Linux on the world, I guess. Uh, the system daemon is really very related maybe maybe like like a um b b next generation cron d and more powerful as you described but but in in what linux flavors is the system d can it be found so again if you use the if you use any latest distribution like fedora red hat uh Uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Ubuntu, um, any other basically fully flavored Linux. Mm -hmm. I think that in majority of them, at least by default, systemd is the default. Um, but when you switch to more low-level operating systems like Alpine, that's not present there. But I think that for operating system where it's even possible to, to run Motic, 
this is installed by default, at least if you didn't change any configuration when installing it. Um, but mm -hmm. I think that Ubuntu uses this by default for five years now. So the, the, the only sort of drawback here that that we sort of noticed is that um, systemd is now widely spread uh, widely adopted and mm -hmm. it is developing sort of fast um, and when you use long-term uh, solutions like mm -hmm. ubuntu 1820 they have yeah. uh, two year uh, they have they have uh, a new operating system every two years and that that version is supported for five years so in that version, you will not. You will just receive patches uh, of your system diversion, and you will not get the new features. Um, and they are adding some cool features there, so it, it's nice to be on on, on track with the newer versions. Um, and that that's maybe that maybe is a little bit of drawback that if you want a long term solution, you're stuck with that version, and maybe you lack some features of system D well, and some features like of system PHP, D timers. That's the one as well. Same story. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, yeah. But let's say that you have some stable clients, long term clients. So this is also a benefit for them, and of course for you as a maintainer of that yeah. that VM or that operating system. So yeah. it has its drawbacks and its advantages, of course. Okay, got it, got it. And um, just just to to recap, uh, this has nothing to do with the Mordic core, the Mordic code, or anything. It's just about the ways of calling the Mordic uh, commands, etc. So it's purely in, in the environment, in the operating system, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, now. In, in your talk, you also m talk about uh, putting multiple commands into a single um, system D. What's the name? Script or, or call? Um, so, like uh, for instance, do the campaign trigger for uh, the ca campaign rebuild first, and then do the campaign trigger, etc. So that's probably part of your, of your setup, I guess. In, in the re repository that you linked to in the, in the talk, you had a really basic example for controlling just the segments update. Um, how, does your, how do your systems look today in reality? How complex is the system D setup? So yeah, uh, when we were when I was preparing for the talk, uh, and also when I was observing the Slack community, I think that I noticed that the the level of the technical level of users regarding this, so regarding Linux and timers, is not the highest. So the basic user just wants things to work. So the example there is really basic. Uh, hopefully, uh, people will understand at least the concepts. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit more complicated and technically more advanced uh, answer is that. Systemd timers basically can run anything. Um, in our case, in our example, they are running a bash script. Mm -hmm. And in that bash script, you can put basically whatever you want. Ah, so I see. Yeah. In terms of, let's say, uh, the, in terms of technically using it, it doesn't really matter. You can put a whole program in. The, mm -hmm. the advantage that we are looking here is the exit code. So Systemd knows that if we are if we if we if we put ten commands into that bash uh, script, it mm -hmm. will still wait for it to exit. Although it will take a long time. Yeah. Um, Do have, and uh, we don't uh, care uh, how much time it will take. We just care that when it mm -hmm. finishes, it will restart with the next yeah. iteration. And that's one approach. Yeah. And the, the second approach is basically that what systemd uh, timers or systemd allows you to do is to set up dependencies. Right. So if you set if each timer just uh, is just running one script, which is probably more uh, easier to handle, you can set up dependencies. So you can say, wait for this timer to finish, and also wait for that iteration to finish. Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, a use case where you need some dependencies, so uh, we can't proceed until that's be that is rebuilt or something like mm -hmm. that do not continue, you can set this for dependency. So in this case, there's no need to put multiple commands in one timer, right? 
Um, but I think that this this would be too advanced uh, for this uh, first explanation of that. Um, and I think no, that my question people was who, really about reality, not not like describe the details of what you do, but what 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 are the routes that you are doing? And you say, in reality, you put all the complexity into the bash scripts, and the bash bash script is called by systemd, right? Yeah. So we we basically okay. do this. We put uh, everything in bash scripts. Um, mainly because of some issues where we also still use Ubuntu 18. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, let's say, sort of our problem. Um, but in general, yeah, one one uh, one task per timer, one exit code, and we can control more granularly um, how, how timers are started and ended. Mm -hmm. Because we know that each timer is just running one thing, right? Um, yeah. Let's say if you go on the other side, Of, of this extreme, we could be we could be basically putting all the commands in one timer, and we would just run them in serial uh, mode. And when they are all run, everything yeah. is rerun. But that's okay. again on the other side. Um, so in general, yeah, we use separate timers for each command, um, and that works okay. for us perfectly. Okay, cool. Um, things like like. Uh, catching long running or broken jobs like like here's a really slow api and then the the console script runs for three hours um so in that that would you do through a timeout command and uh, as part of the shell script right uh no so everything in this case uh is is being catched through systemd so okay. uh The, the only drawback is that if, let's say, for some reason, this command takes 15 minutes instead of three hours, uh, so uh, basically vice versa, if this command takes three hours instead mm -hmm. of 15 minutes, the next iteration will wait for the previous one to exit. Um, no, my honestly, point, we sorry, did... My, my, point was, my point was, uh, if this takes long, longer than 30 minutes, then kill it. Uh, that's not yeah, something so that systemd does itself, does it? Yeah, you have a timeout there. Oh, that okay, you can good, set, cool. mm -hmm. and if you if you would have that use case, um, mm -hmm. honestly, setting the, that timeout is a little bit tricky because sometimes yeah. you have a command that maybe like once a week will actually take longer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You have just added ten thousand contacts, yeah. Um, so you will maybe time out that, that command because systemd will, because you set up, you, you configure systemd that timer uh, with that timeout and systemd will think, yeah, it's just something went wrong. But in reality, it's just uh, doing something, but it's taking relatively long. And luckily we didn't have a lot of those problems. So, um, and we have some yeah. other monitoring systems in place that alert, alert us uh, when things like that actually happen, where something breaks. So yeah. uh, we are if, we are not using that feature. Okay, got it. Uh, and so, if System D has has some issue or, or like has to kill or has to use the timeout, I, I'm sure it will be able to send an email or, or drop a log message or something. Um, for things within the Bash script, like here's a Bash script with a console command, and that returns an error or whatever returns some some sort of exception um, um, are you catching that as well i mean that's obviously not related directly to system d but but uh, it's another thing that has come up lately uh, are you catching error situations of, of console commands okay so uh, the answer again sadly goes in two ways uh, in version so we are using ubuntu as our primary operating system which i think is the most common one Uh, yeah. Honestly, and in version 18, uh, you had to do some tweaking to send uh, to send stuff out to standard error, standard uh, out, or to the file to some dot log file, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, in Ubuntu 20 and later, th this is more automatic. But honestly, uh, uh, you also have this in cron jobs. You c in cron job, you can also in a cron job file, you can also set up mail to. Right, and in yeah. the case of standard error, something uh, that something uh, actually arrives at the standard error, it will be sent to that mail. You can do the same yeah. with system D. Uh, yeah. It's just a matter of implementation if you want that. Um, so if you want yeah. standard error, 
being sent to your email. And if you have your uh, and, and if your server, your virtual machine, your postfix is basically set up in a way that it will be able to send the email. Uh, um, the problem is, in my experience, that, that or if I am not mistaken, that, that many console commands do not make proper use of standard error. They uh, use they send their error message to standard out, and that drives us crazy all the time. Um, of course, okay, uh, also that nothing to do with system D again. Yeah. yeah, but that's so. Yeah, that's more of a bug that uh, long term needs to be fixed, right? It should. It should. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, enough. Of, uh, enough of the nerd stuff. Um, thank you very much for this push uh, to a, an alternative uh, scheduler um, for giving this good example, and maybe I'm, I'm, I think it should make its way into the the official Mordic documentation to say, hey, rather than just using cron in this or that way, you might consider using System Daemon uh, like this, um, because that would help people use Mordic more efficiently and more successfully, I guess. Um, is there any other things that you are that you have in your mind, Mordic wise, wise these days? Is there any other project that you do or problems that you're tackling? Yeah, so of course we have our own uh, a list of features that we we would like to see in Motic. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the biggest features that we wish someday is multi tenancy. Um, so oh. we we have found uh, a market for let's say a lot of small customers, or at least at the beginning they are small customers, mm -hmm. and it would be. For us, it would be the easiest way to solve this with a multi-tenant instance, right? Mm -hmm. um, of course, that feature is not there yet. Uh, the feature technically is, of course, uh, a really big one. It, yeah. it would involve a lot of changes, a lot of programming, maybe even redesign of some concepts, uh, core concepts. So we know that this is probably a long-term uh, feature request or it might not never get done. Um, but here we think that there's a market for for that. Um, so a lot of customers that would be joining us with some small fee that we could uh, charge because we would have this simple multi-tenant instance and then gradually ease those customers into uh, more services that we offer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, uh, I, so, see, I see the point. The, the typical answer these days, or, or so far, has always been, well, rather use individual standalone ins installations there, and if you need them to be uh, cheap, then just have a great environment where you can spin up a fresh installation or, or uh, all the time, and you can maintain those installations really automatically, etc. Maybe this, this hooks back into your... Uh, your work domain like, like uh, Kubernetes and, and things like that that might help in, in providing such an infrastructure and we have this Kubernetes project or initiative in Mordic I would suspect that, that the, the energy will rather go into making that better maybe even coming up with an open source management framework for, for mul multiple uh, Mordic instances that would be surely a, a dream for many Mordic agencies whereas I, I, I'm not convinced that, that putting all the effort into creating multi-tenant version will find enough uh, contribution uh, to make that happen well, I don't know I don't know I, I frankly haven't really thought about that a lot but it's it's certainly a problem to solve yeah, I, I agree, um, but I think that when I read on when I read some posts on let's say at least on Slack, I think mm -hmm. that some people are just expecting this functionality out of the box mm -hmm. already. Um, and yeah, I agree. It, I think it's just too much effort for this solution. Um, we do have some Ansible scripts that automate uh, the installation of Motic relatively. Mm -hmm. I will not say 100% uh, because each client is a little bit different, but quite yeah. a lot is done with that. So that's already easier, um, mm. but that's not our 
final goal. So yeah, as you mentioned, maybe long term, what 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 do we also miss currently is um, more documentation, how to set up uh, Mautic. So let's say the the full environment uh, with containers, right? Mm -hmm. The most common being today is Kubernetes, of course. Um, yeah. But yeah, maybe it's, that, it would that, be a good idea for you to to hook up with the Kubernetes uh, initiative because there's surely a lot more knowledge already than can be found in the written documentation, and uh, also they can always use people's input and, and improvements. So yeah, maybe maybe that's the best recommendation and for everybody else who who is interested in things like that. There's a Slack channel called uh, i kubernetes i guess i need to check mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so that's where you can find people who are also in that area of work yeah yeah it's it's a, it's a tricky thing i mean it's that people have that sort of expectation we yeah, accepted um so far it has been a a usp for Acquia or for Web Mechanic or as other test providers, that they have their meta framework for managing multiple instances for giving agencies the 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 chance to multi, to uh, to manage multiple instances mm -hmm. at the same time and so on. So that's a sort of multi modic management system, which is or has always been closed shop by by, every, by everybody who has has something like that. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. There's so many ends in, in Mordic where we have ideas for more for more features, for more advanced features. Uh, well, well, it's, uh, yeah, what you don't do yourself, <laughs> you better not wait for. Yeah. Okay. Well, Anything else? I mean, like, like you did the, the talk on the Mordic conference. Um, uh, is there any other Mordic community interaction of yours? So, as I mentioned, yeah, we are uh, a team working on Mautic. Um, I have coworkers that are actually developing, uh, let's say, plugins for Mautic. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I mainly help them, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not the, the person in front of, let's say, any pull requests or uh, stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I, I try to ask and answer things on Slack mainly. And so that's currently my interaction with Mautic, uh, yeah, Mautic cool. community, let's say. Okay. No, that's, that's cool. Um, and yeah, once again, thank you so much for sharing your experiences, and your ideas, and uh, for being so open about the, the internals. Um, I sure hope to see you one day in person, maybe at... Uh, at the Mautic event uh, during DrupalCon in, in, in Prague, or maybe at some other event, live or online or whatever. Um, okay, man. Um, thank you so much. So much. The sun is waiting outside. Um, I think it's time to <laughs> to wrap this up. Any any last thing you want to send to the community? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, so that we came a long way from. When we started with Mautic, I think it's developing rather quickly and rather nice. So I would like to say thank you for all who are contributing to this project. Um, and of course, if anyone has a question honestly regarding anything and feels that uh, we join forces, we can solve the problem, feel free to reach out, ask. Um, there's Slack, there's there's plenty of other channels how we can get in touch. So that's basically that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I couldn't see, say that better than you. And uh, I'll add uh, the relevant links to the show notes, like always, so people can find you. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Uh, talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, thanks, Clement, for the super nice and deep insight. But in my mind, I'm not really sure if we are now switching from cron to system D. What do you think about it? Uh, yeah, as I said, it's certainly interesting. It, it does have some some advantage advantages, but I also like the the more deterministic way of saying, okay, 
every hour at the hour this yeah. is what's happening and i don't want to have, have uh, want, want it to happen 20 times uh, if not needed yeah. Uh, yeah cpu is cheap but energy is getting more expensive <laughs> um uh and so the, the maybe a mix would be good but in in general i think this whole cron thing bugs me a little bit and and when when clement uh, published the 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 headline for his talk at multi conference i thought maybe he is doing something really amazing there no system d is it's cool no. so it is amazing but it's not like like uh getting away from from this general idea of system based scheduling and and maybe eventually when we have uh, 10 other big points solved and then maybe the 11th might be re reinventing the entire mm -hmm. scheduling thing with more yeah. true yeah yeah talking about scheduling we're <laughs> almost the master of sequence <laughs> <Yeah>. nice <laughs> yeah the modic sprint the next modic sprint is happening on the 23rd of september in prague which is roughly in about two weeks and that's the day after drupalcon there will be a modic day uh, in prague it's free and um, yeah ideally if you're in the area or can make it, it would be nice to have you out there on in premise but i think every remote worker remote contribution is very welcomed yeah absolutely absolutely and we'll put the link in the show notes as well uh yeah be there um even if you never did any sort of contribution just want to get to learn some people that's a yeah. fantastic idea and uh, they will be very very happy to help you getting started or whatever your plan is sure yeah, yeah. and then there's uh, even bigger it's of course mod conference south america yeah. coming up uh, it's also just like two months to go <laughs> two weeks two months uh, yeah <laughs> um so november 3rd to 4th mm -hmm. uh, also is on the 5th is the training day um tickets ticket sales is open the call for speakers it should be open any day now maybe when we publish this episode it is uh the morticon.mortic.org website is there all that thanks to the local team uh led by deborah Sal salves uh also rodrigo is doing a, a lot of effort with his mm -hmm. agency there in sao paulo um so we are about to book our flights and i can't wait to get there and uh, have a mordic party in sao paulo yes will be great mm -hmm. yeah so this mordic party is coming to an end <laughs> oh. uh, nothing is equal <laughs> um yeah like always please give us our uh, your feedback we are very <laughs> Uh, very very curious to hear for, to hear from you. Do you want more news? Do you want less news? Do you want more case studies? Do you have some case studies for us? Yep. Uh, do you want to Leon to sing a song or whatever? No. Please um, give us feedback. I will if you ask. <laughs> promise. Promise. Pinky promise. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Enough of that. I guess <laughs> we have to go, and uh, we have. We wish you a. Good and healthy time and talk to you soon. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.